Hey everybody, oh. today on yeah. Together for Good, Ooh. we're slugging Ooh. it out on something Ooh. that affects every marriage <laughs> conflict. <laughs> today we're going to talk about several <laughs> ways that we typically do conflict that don't work and are incredibly Ooh. unhealthy, and we're going to give you a framework <laughs> that does work so that you can actually resolve That'd the issues. Ow. It's really hard to fight fair. <clears throat> Melody's got a head start. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to the Together for Good podcast, your guide into the real and inspired marriage and life adventure that you never knew was possible. I'm Meredith Osterhaus, the daughter of your hosts, Dan and Melody Griffin. Mom and Dad's teaching, stories, and experiences with lots of laughing mixed in will move you to make your marriage last, all while making a difference in the world around you. Are you ready? Here we go. So here's the facts as it relates to conflict. We know there, there are a couple of things that we just know that are true. And one of those is that conflict's a reality. It's absolutely a reality in every relationship. Um, sometimes we'll find not only in our relationship, but with others that we work with that we try to bury it. What, talk about that. Well, it's interesting to see what different pasts folks have is how were you raised? What was mm-hmm. it like with your parents when you were growing right. up? Right. I can tell you that I was raised in a home where I never saw or heard my parents fight or even disagree. Right. You heard disagreement. It wasn't throwing and yelling and screaming, but it was different. There was conflict. I didn't even see conflict. It wasn't as much. Um, there, there was still the we don't fight you know, kind of a thought process, right? So right. therefore, um, when there was conflict, it's one of those things of, okay, tell your brother you're sorry, kiss and make up, smooth it out. Right. As opposed to deal with what's really going on. Right. And so before we ever even started our journey, we already both came in yeah. with some preconceived ideas yeah, of conflict. Did. My preconceived idea of conflict is you shouldn't have it. Right. You won't have it. Right. Don't have it. If you do, you're this, there's a real problem. Right. Um, so I I didn't even know about conflict resolution all that mm-hmm. much because I didn't know much about conflict. So to say that it's a reality in every relationship that was kind of news to me. Yeah, and it, and it's maybe even right out of the gate your first takeaway, your first homework assignment. Talk about if you will your families of origin. How did they handle conflict? Because we bring that we do context, that model. yeah, into our into our current relationship. Um, was it healthy? Was it unhealthy? The the fact of the matter is this though: is conflict is real, um, and you know denial is more than just a river in Egypt. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? So you can act like it's not there. But it is. Absolutely. So let's just go ahead and put that on the table, first of all. And not only is it real, it's necessary. Yeah. Now, conflict is a bad word to me. In my in my thinking, it's a four-letter word. You avoid it at all costs. Conflict is bad. Don't have it. Mm-hmm. But well, why, we, and talk about it. why? Why is that? Go, go deeper on the, into that. Some of it is my temperament. Okay. Some of it is that I tend to go into a shell like mm-hmm. a turtle mm-hmm. as opposed to come out like a porcupine. Right. It's that fight or flight thing. I'm a flight. Yeah. I'm a, let's make this okay right now. Yeah. I don't want to, there to be conflict. So when, when you have said to me, conflict is necessary... I've, that just doesn't feel mm. true to me. I'm like, mm. no, let's not have conflict. You're not saying to me fighting in a negative way no. is necessary. No. You're no. saying, let's let's spell out what is conflict. Yeah. Conflict, I guess I guess where I would come from, conflict is simply a difference of perspective, uh, a difference of experience, a difference of opinion. And if we deny the necessity of real, in the, the realizing that we are different, right? And in those differences, there can be great strength. That's a great thing that we're different. And yeah. so, when you use the word conflict, for some reason, that just has a bad connotation in my mind. But if you say to me, Melody, differing is good, yeah. I'm like, 
Oh, yeah, it sure is. Right. Differing is great. I'm glad we're different. We're better because we're different. We're stronger because we're different. But we so, have to talk about that. We have to right. engage and in that. And conflict is differing. So if you have a conflict, if we can train ourselves in our relationship to say, this is a good thing. Maybe hard at times, but this is good because we are refining what we believe. We're refining what's important. And because we've had this conflict, we can move even more in the same direction, in the right direction. Yeah. So so we're not talking about throwing plates at each other, okay, or food fights. We're, we're not talking about, um, and we'll give... We'll give more context as to what does fighting fair look like as we keep going. It's let me throw one more caveat here. I think it's really important, moms, dads, uh, if you have kids, I think it's important that your kids watch you have conflict and also resolve the conflict. <laughs> it, it, don't let them see the conflict yes. and not see the resolution. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, it, because. You know, so sometimes what will happen is you'll start having conflict and you're like, what, what, we'll take this to the bedroom or, you know, some other private Right, place. and that seems very admirable, of but, course. But then the, your kids never get to see they know you the fall. resolution. Right, right. They so they fall. need to see how do you go through the process of fighting fair. Right, you come back around and you say, other. okay, I know you know that happened. Let me tell you wh- where you know, we landed and how we got here. I'm laughing out loud. Don't yeah. forget what you're going to say. No, it's no, important. It's but I'm laughing out loud because <laughs> our kids have watched this through the years. They've watched it do it do us do it really wrong. They've watched us sometimes do it right (laughs) and remember the other day when you were when you brought my mom my mom just moved in with us my 90 year old amazing mom just moved in with us big life change and you were bringing her furniture in and we had had a conversation about which bed to bring from her house to our house said bed did not get brought and it was truly a misunderstanding mm-hmm. but i didn't know there had been a misunderstanding you didn't know there had been a misunderstanding i'm like where's oh, i was mom? clear as bell <laughs> <laughs> where's mom's bed and i just about went into full meltdown mode i, I don't raise my voice i just don't i kind of sort of raise my voice i was like what no this is terrible this and i look around and i see all three of our kids going here we go <laughs> and that made me laugh and then i checked myself i checked my heart and i was like Wait a second. I don't know if you remember, but I said something to you like, you did not intend to do the wrong thing. You know what this was? This was simply a miscommunication. And I see Savannah, our 18-year-old in the background going. (laughs) Yeah, She was cheering me on for fighting fair. So, yeah, let's let our kids see that. Do you remember what you were going to say? Well, no. Oh, that's okay. That just means that it'll probably come up. I do know. Right now. (laughs) (laughs) It is easy for me. To honor Melody and to um, to treat her with respect when it's smooth sailing, when there's no storms on the horizon. And we've had enough rest, and we're not hungry. When no stress at work. When I honor Melody, when I am upset, where I'm 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 emotionally engaged, that really is showing Mm. some maturity. Uh, it's showing it's showing um, a fruit of the spirit, quite mm. honestly. Uh, so, Self control. Yeah. So so don't be um, don't be shy about having proper conflict in front of your kids, but make sure they see the resolution. Absolutely. Um, so what are the different types of conflict? So if you're going to have the conflict, here's the different types that we typically see in relationships. Um, Not ours, other people. Well, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. The first type would be, I'm going to call it aggressive conflict. Okay. So I'm not, and I'm not talking about a screaming match here. I'm talking about where you bring it, you're bringing the wrong perspective to the conflict. And the, the, the real perspective in aggressive conflict is, and, and I'm talking about this one because this is the one that I would tend to move toward. I'm going to win. You're going to lose. Because at the end of the day, this really isn't about the conflict. Or about resolution of the conflict, I should say. It's really about me winning. It's about me having the debate and me winning the debate. Um, You're really good at it. Well, I am. I am. I can. Like, wait, I do I it really well, even when I'm by myself. That's the sad <laughs> part. But, but again, that's yeah. not about resolution. It's not about fighting fair. So I have to really be careful there to not get into an aggressive mode. Are there ways that you can kind of tell? If you're in that unhealthy, aggressive? 
here, here is my telltale sign. And, and this, is, this is after a, a lot of therapy and a lot of years. My intensity level amps up. And when my intensity level amps up, Melody shuts down. Hmm. Uh, the girls will shut down, uh, our kids. Um, and it's one of those things of, Dad, <laughs> stop yelling at us. I'm not yelling. Um, you know, and, and there really, are like gestures. I really there don't feel like, I don't feel like I'm yelling. I don't feel like, like I'm. Okay. Part of it is, yeah. again, you talked about temperament. You which, feel it very strongly. It's what I, that's, You're expressive. It's a yes, beautiful thing. But it comes across as a bulldozer. If you, you see know? people backing up when you're talking. You, might want to you know, often wrong, but it. never in doubt. Yeah. I have no problem, you know, just pushing through all of that. What are the so percentages? Twenty five percent right, seventy five percent sure. So, but there's other types. I love that. Yeah. So aggressive conflict uh, can be very unhealthy. Another unhealthy type of conflict, if yep. you will, is one that I specialize in. It's passive conflict. Now that might surprise some of you because I have a large personality. I'm outgoing. I'm expressive as well, but but I'm a peace at any cost kind of girl. Mm -hmm. On the inside, I want all the peace, all the time, even if it's false peace, which really isn't a real thing. False peace isn't real, but it feels real because everybody is pretending to play nice. But but on the inside, there's still quite a conflict going on that has not been resolved. Okay, so passive conflict. There's a goal here. The end goal with passive conflict is to avoid 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 so you do whatever it takes to avoid now a really great tool with why passive why deal conflict. with why deal with today what you could put off till tomorrow thank you sure so a really great tool for an unhealthy passive conflict would be uh the silent treatment hmm. don't do that don't do that now are there times that and that's actually going to trip over a little bit into we're going to talk about passive aggressive in just a moment but the silent treatment is a little passive aggressive this where True. where where True. here is where i see melody going passive it's one of those things of um deferring let's 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 uh, let's guide this somewhere else as opposed to this issue or even so, i'm giggling because i'm like sure whatever uh-huh that's great that's passive aggressive though because oh, that's okay. not what you really mean. Okay, so the avoidance passive... avoidance is let's change the subject. Gotcha. Let's talk about something different. Gotcha. Um, you know, instead of having the conversation now, let's talk about the weather. Avoid, or let's talk avoid, about avoid, avoid. Yeah. That's avoidance. So you you've you've already walked us right into passive aggressive. You're welcome. So passive aggressive <laughs> is where I don't think that's anything to be proud of, well, people, but but, but passive aggressive is where, you know, on the front I'm going to um, avoid, but on the back side, yeah. I'm going to make sure that I win. And if I don't win, I'm going to make sure you don't win. So it may mm. almost be a, um, uh, you know, equal retribution kind of thing. Right. So, you so ha- on the front end, on the outside, I'm going to make it look like I'm playing nice. Right. But the undercurrent is revenge. Oh. The undercurrent is punishment. The undercurrent is... Hey, it's, it's don't mess with me. Right. It's, um, I'm going to give you the silent treatment, and I'm going to make you pay. Um, but I'm not going to have to, quote unquote, be on the front lines of handing out the, the punishment. You're going to have to punish yourself. And it just doesn't work. It, I, I it tell, doesn't work. I tell the joke that's not all that funny, really, but I tell the joke that when we were first married. tell it anyway. Huh? I am because it makes me laugh and isn't really that all that matters. <laughs> uh, when we were first married, I gave you the silent treatment a lot, but I finally stopped doing it because I realized you kind of enjoyed it. I didn't even know it was happening. <laughs> that is so telling. I didn't know. I mean, no, I mean. I, would, I didn't I know mean, what was I would happening. go like a whole day without talking to you. And on the inside, I was like stirring and brewing. Yeah. And yeah. He was going on his merry way, y'all. So, guess who was suffering from that? It was me. Um, and then, second of all, we were never, ever reaching any resolution. resolution. Yeah. And so, guess what was happening it, to every it, single it, fight that we didn't have that it's we should have? Packing a bomb. Had? It was like exactly. packing a bomb. And, and by the way, none of these types of conflict that we've talked about 
ultimately lead to resolution. No, none of that. You don't know, choose if you're any of them. if you're aggressive and you win, and your your partner basically I told her. They, and, I told him. and they basically back off, you still don't have resolution. You didn't you didn't solve the problem because you know what's going to happen. It's going to happen again. Hundred percent. It may with, not be the with, same and situation. And bring friends. It's going <laughs> it's going it's going to continue to multiply. You're Absolutely. packing a bomb. Right. So. What is healthy conflict? That's where we want to go. And, and healthy conflict Wait, is I'm going to write always, this down. No, okay. you don't have to. It's okay. in the show notes. Okay. You're all good. <laughs> healthy conflict is about reaching a path forward. Where are we going to resolution? So we want to give you a framework for healthy conflict. And before conflict. you move on with that, we've talked about what's the goal in aggressive? It's winning. What's the goal in passive? It's avoiding. What's the goal in passive aggressive? I dare say revenge, vengeance, punishment. Don't mess with me. What's the goal in healthy? Res- resolution. Resolution. You said it moving forward. You got it. Learning from what happened. Doing a fight autopsy, if you will, at some point and saying, what happened? Why did it happen? And next time, how do we move forward yep. and go around the pothole, yep. if you will? All right, so framework for conflict. We got a, th- a, th- a three-point framework, okay? So here's where we start. Let's pinpoint the issue. What is the issue here that we're having the conflict over? This is harder than it sounds because oftentimes the problem is not the problem. Okay, so you need to spend some time on what is the real issue. Remember that fight we had when we were getting ready to do this podcast called Fight Fair? Legit. I I blocked it out. (laughs) Like as we were getting, as we were, as we were, you know, internalizing this great content that really is part of our journey and has helped us through, right. you know, literally, um, as we were working on the content, we, we, we had a pretty good one and it came from, I was, or wasn't doing something. You had an expectation of what you thought I should be doing. It came from unmet expectations. Right. But those expectations were not clearly communicated. And you needed help in an area, and I didn't help you, and you felt and I unseen, went and, unhelped. And so therefore, in my mind, I went somewhere that wasn't even accurate. Right, you made Because of the story in my head that I was telling myself. Correct. So... So we had to pinpoint the issue. You got to pinpoint the issue. So Let we, me give one other one other thing it. with that and then we'll go keep going. Make sure that you're only dealing with one issue at a time. Um, don't try to solve all the world's problems at one sitting. It's not going to work that way. Solve that issue, resolve that issue, create your way forward, and then we'll come to the next issue next time. But right now, just take it one at a time. Sure. And we'll get into a lot of that next episode when we talk about the rules for fighting fair. So we've talked about pinpointing the issue. What What's even going on here? Right. What is the root issue? And then you want to communicate why it's important. There you go. For instance, when he felt like he needed help in an area and he felt like I was not seeing what he needed and coming in alongside him and helping him, we had to talk through, okay, wait a minute. What, what's happening here? Why is this important? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, he was able to verbalize to me, hey, I don't want to feel alone in this. In my mind, he wasn't remotely alone in this, and I could have given you an incredible dissertation as to all the things that I had done that shown him how important this was to me. But at that moment, he did not feel like it was important to me. Even though it was, he didn't feel that. And so he was able to say to me, Here's why this is important to me. I want us to be together in this. Here's a great um, rule of thumb with both pinpointing the issue and communicating why it's important. When you're pinpointing the issue, it's not personal. It's not, here's my issue. You are my issue. (laughs) Yeah, that's not not going to work. it? It may be a behavior. It may be an attitude. But I want to avoid the word you. Because if I use the word Melody, you, 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 all of a sudden she's going to be defensive, and it's either going to be fight or flight. So model that. What so, would that look like? Well, let's. We got to keep going because of time. But with that said, when we communicate why it's important, I can use me all I want to. I feel like this. This is how I think. This is how I feel. This is when how this I happened. see. Right. This is this is how I see the situation. You're going to insert yourself into the equation. But make sure that you're giving the other person the permission to stay in the conflict stay when you're fighting fair. I like it. They feel so, safe. So the, the last point, the last framework here is to define how we're going to move forward. So 
let me put the words to it like this because I think this really helps. We've, we've defined the issue. We've shared our perspective, how I think, how I feel. Why it's important. Why it's important. Now I can say, so what do you see that I don't see? That if I saw what you see, it would change the way I feel. Mm, that's good. So where do we differ? So this allows the opportunity for us to now have open communication and, if, if you will, to fight fair. You're not going to necessarily agree, Mm-mm. but you got to find a way to move forward. Mm-hmm. And I would say a lot of times when we hit that point of resolution, maybe most of the time, we don't feel it like, oh, this is so great. Let's make. There's still that little bit of, ow, what just happened? And then in the hours and days that follow, as I pray through it, mm-hmm. and as you do, it's like, what, what, what did you have for me in that? And then help me in the future to honor him better. Help you in the future to honor me better. I try to pay attention. So today when we were in a similar situation, I tried to remember now, how can I help him feel honored and loved in and this vice situation versa. when I didn't last time? Because, because we had a mutually agreed upon way of moving forward. Right. And we both had the same end goal. Right. Let's let's learn from this. Let's move forward. Let's honor each other well. Right. Boom. Okay, it's time for some homework. You knew it was coming. First thing we want you to do is we want you to think back to how you were raised. What was it like in your home when there was conflict? And we'd be curious what the styles were. Was it more aggressive? Was it more passive? Was it more passive aggressive? Or was it pretty much healthy? So we'd like for you to do that first. And how did you bring that into your current relationship? Here's the second piece of homework. It's time to do a fight autopsy. Go back to a recent conflict that you had in your relationship with your spouse and apply the framework that we gave you of pinpointing the issue, communicating why it's important and defining how you're going to move forward. How would that conflict have been more successful moving toward resolution? Had you used that framework versus the framework that you used, which is just what you've always known, right? That's exactly right. So that's your homework. We look forward to seeing you next time. Hey, don't, Don't ever forget how much we appreciate you subscribing to the podcast, following us on social media. Uh, All of those are great ways for us to continue the conversation as we are all moving forward to being together for good. So this week's show may be over, but the work has just begun. Be sure to check out the great resources and references mentioned in today's show in the show notes at wearetogetherforgood.com slash podcast. It is also super easy to subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. Hey, if this podcast has been an encouragement to you and your marriage and life journey, please let the people in your world know. Help us spread the word about the Together for Good adventure by following us on our Facebook and Instagram pages. This would go a long way to help get the word out. Don't forget to check out our website, wearetogetherforgood.com, for free resources, archived podcast episodes, and other ways you can experience a life and marriage that is together for good.